So we want to look at tonight why the church ought to refrain from alcoholic spirits. Why the church ought to refrain from, avoid, not have anything to do with, not participate in any way with anything that has to do with alcoholic spirits. Now, I initially battled about where to begin this lesson. Actually, I think because I was supposed to teach it maybe two, three weeks ago. And I sat there, and I had a way I wanted to go, but I wasn't going anywhere with it. So, of course, I went away, came back, and God spoke to me. I was like, wow, <laughs> absolutely the way to go. And it brought clarity. And I'm telling you what, church, I have grown through this teaching to understand just a bit more in depth the battle and the struggle against spirits, against demonic spirits. It's no light thing. So, like I said, I battled it, and then God told me two things. One, go to where the word wine is first mentioned. And two, go back to the beginning to begin to understand this matter. Now, of course, once he said that, I was like, of course, of course, of course, Maria, of course. So let's go. So let me state at the start of this teaching that this church believes that the consumption of alcoholic spirits is not conducive to being God's vassal of honor. How many of you want to be a vassal of honor? Fit for the master's use. Okay? It doesn't happen, like, magically. It doesn't happen like that. Sometimes, for some, it's more of a challenge. All right. Now, to be clear, let me name some of the alcoholic beverages. I just said some. Some of the alcoholic beverages that we do not consume. You got beer, wine, wine coolers which I actually read about, which have more alcohol in them than light bears, rum, champagne, brandy, martini, whiskey, just, just the start. Now, hopefully, I don't have anybody that said, oh, my goodness, I got to clear out my, ca my cupboards when I go home. And seriously, because I said we're dealing with the spirit, aren't we? All right. There are those who will insist that God, now listen, this is what we hear, that God made the trees, and vegetation in the beginning so that there's nothing wrong with drinking alcohol. That's what they say. God made the trees. You know what they say about weed? God permitted it to grow. All right, so we've got to... If we don't understand, this is the same angle as the alcohol, alcoholic. It comes from the natural plant. Yeah. So let's go back to check the beginning. Check it out. Genesis 1, 11 and 12. It reads, here beginneth the reading of God's holy word. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good, y'all. <laughs> God saw so all these trees, all these fruit trees, you know, vegetation growing, and God said, good. He said, this is, this is good. This is good. Now, I want you to focus on the fact that what God made, he called good. It's good. So the word good comes from the word tov, 
Now, as an adjective, it means this. God would say it's good, it's pleasant, it's agreeable to your senses, good, excellent of its kind, good, rich, valuable in estimation, appropriate, becoming, uh, better in a comparative state, uh, glad, happy, prosperous, good understanding of man's intellectual nature, kind, benign, right, ethical. That's good. And then as a noun, it means a good thing, it's a benefit, it's welfare, prosperity, happiness, moral good, bounty. What? He, God set this thing up so that whoever was amongst the good got nothing but blessings. And, and you have to get that. God said, it's good. And he said, it's going to be of benefit to you. It's a bounty to you. It's your welfare. You can live off this. I want you to note that when God said it was good, he spoke those words for a reason. Hmm? There was not one thing bad associated with what God ordained. All that was there was good. There was nothing bad. It's all good. Let's go here now. I want to show you something. Genesis 1, 29. God's word. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be meat. It's meat, it's good, and it's meat. All right, so what does God mean by the word meat? What does he mean by meat? This comes from the word okla, okla. And it means food, eating, object of devouring and consumption. He's saying this is meat, it's good, and it's meat. Yes, I want you to consume this. Now I want you to consider something here. Hmm. God did not say that these trees, fruits, and vegetation were only given to those over the age of 18 or 21. I'm going somewhere with this. <laughs> he said, I'm going to be very purposeful. He said, everything I created it's all good, which means every human being that would ever exist in this garden and what I created for you, it's all good. It's good and you can have it as meat. It will sustain you. It will grow you. You will be morally good. You will have good welfare. It's all good. So he never had to make any type of laws for things that are not good because it was all good. It was all good for the living, his creation, mankind. I said we're in Genesis, right? Now get it. What God allowed to exist for consumption was good for every living person. I said it, and I want you to get it, because this is the key. What God called good, everybody could eat it. What God called good, everybody could partake of it. Nobody had to reject it. It was good because God has one standard, and his standard is good. It's good for you. There were no limitations. That was God's food naturally in its purest state. This is what God prepared for consumption. Now, God did all of that on the sixth day, and it just so happens the sixth day is the day of man. So he prepared all this goodness for when he will create man. Man, I want you to have all my goodness. Man, I love you so much. I would only provide what's good for you. I love you so much. I would only want you to partake of that which is good. Yeah. Keep that in mind, mankind. Now we'll soon have to make a choice. And the choice would be concerning what was actually set 
before them and call good. Would mankind keep it good or not? Mm -hmm. Would men, God called it good. Would mankind keep it good? Now look at this, <laughs> Genesis 2, 8 and 9, God's word. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to sight. And of course, we know this. This is repeating it. And good for food. Something else now. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden. Oh, uh, 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 another tree. And the tree of knowledge of good and evil. I'm going to help you in a minute. Okay, you, you got to see. All good. Then he adds these two trees. Total. Now you must know that in addition to all the trees that were good, all the, all the goodness of God, there were two other trees that they were not to touch. I provided everything that's good for you. I know. Think about it diseases and whatnot that we are dealing with in Genesis at the beginning were no such thing. The trees were there for the healing of the nations. But it's something about choice, isn't it? All right. Take a look at this next image right here. Sort of did an imagery. I want you to take a look at it. So here you have, you see all the darker trees. See, all the trees around, then you see two trees in the middle. Two trees in the middle. Now, the thing is, you can't tell which tree is the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, right? You can't tell. It would be much easier if it was like this. Look, look, at look. The tree on one side is half and half. So you'll say, oh, the light part is good and the dark part is the knowledge of Evil, knowledge of good and evil. Eh? It would be easy if when we looked at trees, <laughs> they spoke to us and said, we're on the dark side. Or we're the light side. Let me tell you something. Anytime you have a battle and you think about doing a dark thing, it's because you haven't recognized you walk in light. Let me carry you on. Next one, because this is really how it is. You can't look automatically at the trees, except God did say, next slide, one of these trees is the knowledge of life, or has life, tree of life. So if I touch that one, if, if, God, if, if they had ate of the life, they would live forever. So let me just jump ahead and say this. That's why God, once they had tasted of the other side, said, oh, y'all out of here, because watch, this is glorious, what I'm about to say. Evil will not live forever. Let me say it this way. Evil will not live in the presence of God. Evil's not going to be there. They are given instruction. We're going to read about it. We know about it. Matter of fact, we'll get there pretty soon. Church, you must never miss which tree the enemy tempted Eve with. He didn't want her to. He wanted her to see him. Not live forever. So he didn't tempt her with the tree of life, because that would defeat his whole purpose, because he don't want you to be with God for eternity. He don't want you to choose the good thing. He wants you to be tempted. Oh, watch your temptation. We're talking about alcohol tonight. You're going to see it. But it's all the same thing. Are you going to choose from that tree, because now we're exposed to good and evil, Born in sin, shaped in iniquity, 
So now we have to learn to obey God because we now every day must choose, do I carry out the good or the evil? I have a choice. Every Christian, every human being, every day when you're faced with temptation, picking off that particular tree, you have to decide, am I going to do the good thing or the evil thing? You can't eat of the tree of life because you were never, humanity was never exposed to. All right, so he tempts Eve. Let's look at it. Genesis 3, 1 through 7. I know somebody likes that reading a lot. The word of God. Now, the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, uh, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Now, now remember, pause here. She doesn't really know what death is, you know. Because she hasn't tasted of the knowledge of it. The only thing, we don't even know what death is. We know about it, isn't it? How we die depends how we live. How we die depends on if we've been obedient to God in this garden called Bermuda. Carry on. Serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. See, a little mix, a little, got the truth in there, in it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took up the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both, see, see? She ate first, but her eyes weren't open until she joined with a man. A woman can have seed all she wants. Until she joins with a man, she'll never produce. And so this is what's being shown here. That that woman cannot reproduce generations by herself. So she can't be the only one who partakes of this tree. It must be with the man. And he did eat. And the eyes of them were both opened. And they knew that they were naked. Because now they got the knowledge. And they sewed fig leaves together. <laughs> and made themselves aprons. It would have to be the tree that opened up the evil side of existence. That's what you, you, all, you only can be tempted by that which you ought not do. So whether you be one or 101, if something is presented to you and you're like, oh, I don't know, that's your temptation. And at that moment, don't, you know, don't look at Eve and don't look at Adam and kick up to them because you're going to have to face your own temptation. How many times God says, don't do it, and we still do it? Eve, Adam. Partaking of the evil of the same tree. Think that you can live for God and live for the devil at the same time. There's people eating, up, eating both sides of the tree. So it would have to be the tree that would now bring forth good and evil. Good and evil. Up until now, they ate and it was all good. I mean, they ate, the calories didn't matter. They ate, they probably didn't even get tired, you know, didn't get niggeritis or anything. Didn't have to go to sleep. Every, everything, the meta I'm serious. The metabolism was set 24 hours a day. They probably could work a full 20 hours and, and just maybe need an hour. I don't know, but I'm telling you something, that the perfected state in which God created them, they now were diminished. They were diminished, and the church today has to be careful that we, we don't yield to the ways of the world so that our standard becomes diminished. So look, 
They ate of the fruit. Now they open themselves up to the good and evil of everything. That's it. You can't miss what you haven't had. But once you have it, once in a while there's no memory flashes come back. You remember what they smelled like. You remember what it felt like. That's because you had up the tree. Yeah, you remember, you remember what it felt like to go on and participate and, and, and be on the dance floor and all that. <laughs> you remember, you, that's, that's the tree. I'm trying to tell you that we now need to have the knowledge to reject the tree. Everything we kick up to Eve about, Mother Eve, well, guess what? You're Eve now. You're Adam now. And now you have to say, I, I don't care if you present before me good and evil. I, I will choose good. Yes, I'm capable. Is Maria, is Pastor Seaman capable of evil? Every day, every night, every minute of the day. But I have to ponder and do a quick pondering at times and refuse it. I'm not going down like that. I'm not going down like that. So listen, specifically for our teaching, the good and evil of trees, fruits, and vegetation were now revealed in the earth realm. I want to say that again. I want to say, I'm going to go into it, but I want to slow it on right here. Before that apple was just an apple. It was a good apple. It was a granny apple. Macintosh apple. It was, it was an apple. <laughs> but now that my mind's been opened up, that apple can become something else. All right, all right. This meant that the apple tree that was to their knowledge, only bringing forth good would now have the ability to bring forth evil and death. Evil and death. Remember, that was the consequence once Eve and Adam, Adam and Eve sinned. They had to be removed out, and they were told they would die. So you've now got to broadly think that this fruit, vegetation, trees, are now not only capable, of, God said in the beginning, all good. And then they opened up the evil. So now that which to their knowledge would have only been all good, now their knowledge, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, now they have the knowledge to make it evil. They now have the knowledge to do so. Every tree fruit, and vegetable would now be open to yielding good and evil. It's not that the tree changed. It always had that. You change. Church, church ain't changed since I grew up, since I was young. In the fact that God don't change and I still love him, love him. But we change. It's the same thing happening here. The tree was always there. They went around the garden. They Picking, wonderful, wonderful, best fruit, best, best, best. But the day that they partook of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, all of a sudden, it's, it's different now. So let's look at some of them. I'm not going to go through all of them. But again, we're talking about trees, fruit, vegetation, that God said, all good. So let's look at some grains. You know, it should be a natural part of our diet, grains, right? So barley, you can get from barley. You know, I'm not talking about your barley soup. Let me tell you what you can get. Beer, barley wine, scotch, whiskey, a whole lot of things I can't even let name, pronounce. But it was just barley that God called Good. Yeah, but when you disobey God, you now could make that good become evil. Yeah. Well, look at something else. Buckwheat. I mean, really. Apparently in Japan they use it. Corn. Cornmeal. I talked about cornmeal Sunday. Surely cornmeal is just corn. Well, you ferment that thing, you can get, what's this, chica? Chica, corn bear, tasguini, bourbon whiskey. Moonshine and vodka. I, I 
just thought it was corn. You know, so if, from now on, if I say to somebody, you had any corn? I'm going to say, did you, did you have it natural? Did you eat the gourd of the corn? <laughs> but we have to understand the genesis of all this because people are going to tell you, well, God made the trees. Yes, he did. And mankind sinned and opened up the evil passage of those trees. Let's look at some more. Let's go down to the rice. <laughs> I mean, rice. I mean, a little, just rice, rice. How rice can I hurt you? Spanish rice? Rice, rice, rice. You got more bear. Bear, bear, bear. You go, you go to the grocery store, romp, any holiday. Crop match, 24th of May. One guy had his whole thing packed, his whole trunk. And you know me, I had to say something. It was going to be nice to. I said, wow, yeah, yeah, I it right up. He said, yeah, this is only for, for the Friday night. I, I, I felt like having an old to call right there. But because I'm, I'm going, the evil, watch this, that we pay for. My people are saying big box. Bear. All right, all right, all right. Now what about rye? Rye bear. What's this? Kvass, whiskey. In Russia, they make vodka. In Germany, corn with a K. All right, wheat. I mean wheat. Wheat. Of course, wheat bear. <laughs> the, enemy, the enemy said, one thing we can definitely make out of these grains. Plenty of bear. Long as the earth remains, watch this now, this is a Holy Ghost moment. As long as this is God, God said, as long as the earth remains, seed, time, and harvest. Now, God meant that for the good of his people, for the sustaining of his people. God did not mean for the evil to come forth and cut lives short. Come on now. God said it was all good. He just had to open up this so you die of liver scar. Well, we're going to go into it a bit. Hmm? Now, Fruit, fruit, surely fruit, fruit. Let's look at some fruit. The good, the good fruit. God made apples. God made apples. Mankind make hard cider. Calvados, whatever that means. Apple brandy. See, mankind will just take a good thing and with their knowledge, and let me tell you something. You better catch this. Let me tell you what propels knowledge. Money. Oh, they be thinking of new ways to entice you to bring out the evil of what God naturally said was good. Apricots. Other countries, Bulgaria, Rakia, Palinka, Hungary. <laughs> Bananas, plantains, good Lord. A whole list of these different places in the Congo, and, oh my goodness. Cherries, of course. Cashews. Every tree. Cherries, cherry wine. Kirscht in Germany. Switzerland, coconut, you know, coconut, or palm, toddy. <laughs> you know, and I've never drank, never drank a, not once. Every pure thing, every, watch this, this is the word, this is what I heard 30 seconds ago, every innocent thing. The enemy spirit turns to bring forth evil. You know, you wonder how some men can abuse little children. The same thing. Evil, evil coming forth. We look at that, but we don't look at the bear. We don't. Same spirit. It's the genesis of the same spirit. <laughs> Ginger with sugar. Ginger ale. We're talking about the alcoholic one. First, I had a little issue, like ginger ale, not that. 
not Barrett's ginger ale. <laughs> ginger beer, real beer, and ginger wine, alcoholic. And then, of course, the big one, grapes, all sorts of wine. Yeah, as long as you think you can, a delicacy. Yeah. Always make something like only certain people can have it, and then everybody wants it, you see. You know, just have a little bit of it. It's innocent. It's been distorted from its natural purpose. Pears, pineapples, plums, you name it. All types of wines and different liquors in different places. Because, of course, depending on where you are, the environment is more conducive to the growing of different fruits and vegetables, so they'll make their wine or their beer out of what they can grow. The enemy don't care that, that it's a different type of wine. They just want you, you, they want you to consume it. The enemy wants you to consume it. Because remember, you will produce fruit depending on what you consume. Whatever you take in, naturally or spiritually, you're going to become an advocate of that. A lot of churches can't speak against liquor and, and, and beer, but they have lick, they have wine for Holy Communion. Yeah. Now vegetables. Innocent vegetables. How are you going to make vegetables a crime? Well, that's what the devil does. Look. What's this? Agave? Agave? Sounds wonderful. Agave juice. Fermented becomes Well, it becomes tequila over there. We can pronounce that one, tequila. Don't be, and don't be going outside of Bermuda, Don, Mexico, talking about, I'm going to try some of the native drink. <laughs> well, I just want to experience the culture. That's sin. The culture of sin was created in, in the garden. <laughs> Potatoes. Potato beer. You can take anything and make it sinful. That's, you know why? Because man's imagination takes it there. The evil, because now they have the knowledge. We're living in the 21st century. You know how much a two-year-old can get the iPad and work it almost as well as I can. Something's wrong with that. And so church, I have just shared with you the reason Christians must refrain from alcoholic beverages because you've tra we've traced it back to its beginnings, that it's not good. God didn't call alcohol, didn't call weed and marijuana, didn't call any of that good. The devil came in, tempted mankind, and now they could take everything that was good, everything that was of God, and make it something else. That's why you have to flee the, even the appearance of evil. Because you're like, no, if I partake of that thing right there, who knows what I'm imputing upon my family, upon the lives of people. Now, one thing I've heard people speak to is that some people can handle certain amounts of alcohol better than others. They can handle the liquor. I know you heard. I've heard people say, I can handle my liquor. Yeah, yeah. I can handle my liquor. Yeah. All the while, liquor's, liquor's handling them. But anyway, they can handle their liquor. You thought it too? Yeah. Hey, Bible says, and such were some of you. So we're, we're, not, we're not condemning people to death. We, we can't do that. What we're doing is giving people right knowledge so that they can now choose to refuse fruit, vegetables and trees that have been distorted and therefore when you partake of them now there is distortion that comes about what's the fruit now my response to the person I can handle my liquor is I say well you say you can handle your liquor I say this some people are better liars so should everybody lie you see you see you see Hmm? Some people have no problem viewing pornography and then attending a church service. So should we just let it loose? Hey, we can all watch blue movies and pornography and go buy those dirty books. 
We don't say that anymore. A dirty books. Yeah. I'm going to say it. I'm going to be the only pastor in Bermuda to say it. Dirty books. Yeah. Sharing parts, doing things that God didn't, didn't plan on doing things like that. Dirty. <laughs> That's right. I'm old school. I'm old school. Because we want clean children. We want strong children. But now we're exposing them to more of the evil of the tree. And we wonder why we have, I thought about today, we have a high percentage of single mothers, just, just single mothers. Because it tasted, it looked good. It felt good. It tasted good. And I brought forth fruit. And now he ain't no good. Because he was never good. Because you, watch this. And I'm going to say it this way with that example. It was never good because you partook of it outside of the covenant of marriage. Inside of marriage would have been all good. All good. So we, we got to go back old school. I hope you all going to stay with me at Shekinah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to stick with the original intent of God's word. The righteousness of who God is. Going to put pressure on you and think you can, you can make it because the key is you love God so much, you want to obey God. You want to, you want to see God one day. And the only way that we can see him is if we obey him. Ain't me no excuse, but you know, God, you gave me these feelings. He said, yeah, Eve had a feeling. What did I do with her? I kicked her out of my presence. You see? You see? So what else? You know, some people can handle their weed. Make some calm and creative. Should we all just random? Just open it up. Because we want you all creative and calm. Some people are great at adultery. They never get caught. So I just say, put it out there, everybody. Go for it. You may be one of those two. See? So we can't, we can't value at different acronyms the sin and say, well, you look like you can handle some little wine. You look like you can handle three bears. You look like you're a 12 bear girl. You look like you're a two bear girl. No, it's all wrong. One to however many. It's against, watch this. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. He just said to me, it's not the natural use. Hmm. You know where that takes me, right? The natural use of the man, the natural use of the woman, also the natural use of the tree, of the fruit, of the grain. There's a natural use. But the enemy makes us think we're smart. Eve thought she was smart and wanted to be smarter. So the ability of a person or certain people to handle their sin or alcohol does not make it acceptable to God. Let me tell you something. You will, and probably, maybe, until the day you die, desire certain things that are sinful. And so guess what? Until you die, you have to refuse it. I don't care if, it, I don't care if you got to take a cold shower, hot shower, no shower, whatever. What was that? Remodel your house. Use up your aunt. Do something. For, listen, listen, listen. Listen to me, church. Listen to me, church. Don't you know that God knows what we will be tempted with and he, he will always make a way of escape? You hear me? If we want a way of escape, God will make a way of escape. We have to want that more than we want to do the thing that is untoward and not pleasing to God. Now, you see, God has one standard of living for his people, holiness. <laughs> not holiness for some and a lesser stance of holiness for others. No. Holiness. God does not tempt. Therefore, God, I love this, God would not open up the use of a plant that will harm some and help others. Yeah. You yeah. God is not double-minded. God didn't say yes and no. He said, you choose between yes and no. But I'm telling you, that's a no. Now what you're going to do? It's just like your child. I'm telling you, that stove is hot. Now I can't hold you all day. I'm going to put you down. Watch you. And then we watched, watched, we heard the child screaming, and you know, we went out. And, well, 
<laughs> well, didn't I tell you? You felt it now. And you hope they've learned the lesson for the next time. So we understand the propensity, the natural inclination to sin. I got that. But I'm going to tell you, <laughs> if you love God more, oh, I'm let me tell you something. That's why you gather together with God's people. You're not going to tell me you love God and you don't need to be strengthened. It's a reason why God said forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. Don't give me no excuse because it was a, a, a what you call, office party, family party. You wouldn't forsake the assembling. So we've got to have the standard that this is eternal, eternity uh, like mindedness, eternal lessons that we need. Very important. And so, look at, let's take a little peek. I know I've got at least 50 examples in this, probably 500. But I thought I'd go to the Royal Gazette. Let's look at the evil side of alcohol. It's either good or, or evil. It's one or the other. It's not going to be both. This is from June 28, 2017. Motorcyclists fined for drunk driving. So let, let me read this story without names. A 51-year-old Hamilton Parish, right around the corner probably. A 51-year-old Hamilton Parish man has been handed a $2,500 fine after pleading guilty to impaired driving. The incident occurred shortly before 8 p.m. on November 9th last year. Magistrate's court heard that was on a motorcycle traveling east on the North Shore Road in Smith's Parish when he collided with another vehicle while attempting to overtake three vehicles. Police attended the scene of the crash and detected the smell. You see, seeing doesn't leave a smell. I want you to know that. Okay? The smell of alcohol on breath. He was transported to the hospital for treatment, at which time he was placed under arrest. Samples were also collected. He has a previous connection for impaired driving in 2012, the court heard. He was ordered to pay $2,500 fine and was disqualified from operating all vehicles for three years by senior magistrate Warren Wolf. Let me tell you something. <laughs> One thing I always knew from little, I don't have to make the mistake. I can watch other dodo birds make the mistake and decide not to do it. I must have been five, four, learned that message, learned that lesson, and I followed it. But if I see this person, drunk, overtaking vehicles, causing car crash, loss of $2,500, can't operate vehicles for three years, which means who knows if his job is in jeopardy. Alcohol yields what alcohol is. Now, just because so-and-so drank the same amount, overtook four cars and made it home, doesn't make the alcohol fine. It, you, it cannot be both. There's some suffering going on. Let me read one more. Oh, let me read this first. So now you have demonized fruit, right, the grapes, <laughs> bringing forth the fruit of evil. It impacts the lives of others. It does not care. Bear doesn't care. I, 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 I seen some people drunk. You don't, you don't get, drunk people don't go, my child in bed, let me go help with the handwork. Hey, they become, it's all about their feelings. Matter of fact, we say they're feeling hot. You're lit. You're ready to go. Lit. Ready to go. That's help me out. You know, I ain't in those certain phrases. Full hot. Now, when they, when they say full hot in Bermuda, you, you can see the red coming out of the, the head. It's like you see the heat coming out. And I always, as a teen now, I'm a teen, and I was like, it's hot outside, and they're hot drunk. I'm like trying to figure. I'm like, it's full of hell. <laughs> yeah. 
So let me read this last newspaper article. Just, you can gather them every week. Oh, you would like to say something? Yeah. Surely, surely. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Just for the sake, uh, I'm not sure how long you're going to go on, but I want to ask this question sure. before we get off of Facebook for those mm. who are even listening. Um, uh, and I don't know if I'm jumping ahead mm. on this. I apologize if, I'm do, if I do. But uh, a, a bit of a challenge, because I know that there were the others that would ask this question, mm -hmm. and that is Jesus turning water, water to, into wine. to wine. Yeah. Now, and that's actually the street I was going to go down first. And when God told me, go back to the beginning. Uh -huh. Because what happens is, we're going all the way in the New Testament, right? Mm -hmm. When you, more you go from the Old Testament from the beginning into the New Testament, a lot of things become acceptable. It's like when you first started in the Genesis, it was one man with one woman. Then by the time you get Abraham, the rest of them, they're marrying wives and all that. Mm -hmm. And so there's an expansion of evil as you go forth. And here's what I'm saying. And I knew that was going to come up. And this is what God told me to say. Look at the fruit. Forget looking at the fruit in the, in the Bible. Look at the fruit in your own life. Look at the fruit in your family. Don't, don't, don't tell me because Je Jesus made wine that it's okay when you got people in your family that would rather go to a bar than sit with their children, rather go to a bar and spend money rather than help out their children with homework. So we, we've got to stop copping out. You know what? I don't care if Jesus made wine because it was unfermented, in my opinion. But you know what? He could have made fermented wine, too, instantly. Mm -hmm. And so given that I don't know because the Bible is not totally clear on that, let me go to our lives. What is Bear doing to Bermuda? Why do we have what is called Carter? Why do we have the, the road traffic people? You know, what was that last movie? On the rocks or something? What it called? The road fatality thing. Hmm? Piece of the rock. You think that a piece of the rock is going to stop people from drinking and, and driving drunk? They said, not me. That's the way your mindset is. So let's, and I understand your question because I was ready for it. So I want to encourage Facebook viewers and those that will view it on Swim TV. Let's not cop out that I can drink wine because Jesus made wine. I'll say this, whatever they were into, he provided we don't know the results of it. We don't know what happened on the road. So we've got to look at our own street. We've got to look at our own families. How much money that we span yes. at facilities that at one point wouldn't even let us come in the door. That's true. <laughs> it's evil. Right? Maybe I'll teach on that specifically another day, but that's the way... He didn't have me to go, but that's my answer to it. Let's deal with where we are. Je Matter of fact, if Jesus made wine, we don't know what that wine contained. They said it was better than what they had in the beginning. So we understand that, I will go here, what they had in the beginning, over time, it got worse. So when Jesus made fresh wine, they said that's better than what it was in the beginning. Can I tell you that by the Spirit, if Jesus was in the beginning and he was in the beginning, that when he made wine, it tasted more like apple juice from the Garden of Eden than whatever they were making. Because again, by this time, things have been distorted. And what we see with alcohol, with wine, with beer, with weed, distortions. Family lives are being ruined. I, I love it when people try to justify, and all I do is drive, and I say, you're trying to justify this. See, we can't kick up about foreigners being here and working when we're not willing to put down the liquor bottle or the weed. You can't have it both ways. It's the tree again. You have to choose one or the other, life or death. Now, if you keep on, that, keep on smoking, Puffing that weed, you're going to get that. It's going to be that. And don't talk about alcohol. It's the worst in Bermuda. And we've got songs. Now we've got famous songs. Bermudians love to drink. There you go. There you go. 
Bermudians love suicide. You want Bermudians love to drink and then a piece of the rock. And no, no, we like to drink. I, I listened to a new song today by a young lady, a female. Right in there was something about rum. I said, there you go again. Just speaking a curse over the land. Hmm. Let me read this story here. Two banned from the road for drink driving, February 16th, 2018. A month or so ago, two people have been banned from the road after being caught drinking and driving on the same street almost a month apart. So and so, 53, was great big grand people, was stopped by the police on Church Street, of old church, of old street to church. <laughs> Make a mockery. <laughs> on Church Street after police saw him veering across both lanes on Queen Street at 1 a.m. on December 10th. Abnormal hours. Huh? He admitted drinking to the officers. You know he's drunk. <laughs> I mean, like it was a mystery, you know. No, I, I ain't drunk, not me. He admitted drinking to the officers. He said, um, I have more than a few. I have more than a few, he said. So-and-so provided a breath sample with the lowest reading showing 213 milligrams of alcohol in 100 milliliters of blood, more than double the legal limit. He pleaded guilty in magistrate's court. Well, of course, he convicted his own self both three times, pled guilty in magistrate's court to driving while over the legal limit. He admitted, I wasn't thinking straight. <laughs> Not thinking straight, can drive straight. Matter of fact, wait, once you're, to my knowledge, once you're intoxicated, you can try real hard, but you're not, you're not gonna walk straight. The liquor takes over, it's a spirit. So I'm trying to tell you. Senior Magistrate Warren, respond, Warren Wolf responded, how much thinking do you need to have to say you're not getting on that bike? Listen to what he says. Your children could have been on the road that night. You could have hit them, caused them damage. My children could have been on the road. Mr. Wolf fined him $1,200 and banned him from driving for 18 months. Also appearing before the courts was, this is a female, 25, who admitted failing to provide a breath sample. The court heard that at 1 a.m., see, going to the days. On a Saturday night, you had church Sunday. Yeah, be in the house, ironing your clothes, preparing for church. That's what you should be doing. But no, anyway. The court heard 1 a.m., she was spotted, January 6th, spotted by police. There and across, same place, both lanes on Queen Street. Something about that Queen Street was stopped on, here we go again, Church Street. <laughs> the devil making a mockery. And had difficulty getting her bike on its stand. Al alcohol make you look stupid. Silly. She admitted to have it, admitted to having two glasses of wine in the evening. Exactly. But that's what she admitted to. She didn't say that's all she had. She said, I'm just admitting. Admitted to have two glasses of wine in the evening and agreed to provide the police with breast samples. Well, right there, you know, she had more than two. <laughs> she provided one sample which showed a reading of 181 milligrams of alcohol in 100 milliliters of blood but did not provide a second sample. Mr. Wolf fined her $800, banned her from driving old vehicles for one year. I'm trying to tell you the fruit will bring forth fruit. The fruit of the fruit, grain, tree, it'll bring forth. It'll yield what you expose it to. So let me now go back to the first, what about the first mention of wine in the Bible? Because it's a law in the Bible about first mentions. Superintendent, you mentioned probably the 180th mention, right? Let me go to the first mention. 
it's the law of first mention. I needed you with, other, with no, other, no other mention except this first one to show you the standard of what God says. The first time that wine shares up, people of God, let's see what happens. The first time wine shares up, Genesis 9. It's still in Genesis. He, he gets, gets them early. Hi, hi. Genesis 9, 20 through 26. And Noah began to be an husbandman and planted a vineyard. And he drank of the wine and was drunken. And he was uncovered within his tent. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brethren without. And Shem and Japheth, took a garment and laid it upon both their shoulders and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father and their faces were backward and they saw not their father's nakedness. And Noah awoke from his wine. <laughs> All sorts of things happen when they're drunk and going to sleep. Awoke from his wine. You know, I see sometimes on TV, paternity. Drunk. Never slept with her. Never. How could I do that? I was full hot drunk. Five minutes later, 99.9999, you are the father. You don't know what happens when you're drunk. And Noah woke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done unto him. And he said, look, 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 I want to show you. Oh. First time you see wine and they're drunk. Yeah. Well, let, me, let me say that. Yeah. Yeah. The first time you see wine and they're drunk. Yeah. Matter of fact, say it again this way, Seaman. The first time God shows you wine, he shows you the drunk wine. Yeah. He shows you wine that made him drunk because he understands. What if, pause for a minute, what if God showed us an example and he said, in the book of Genesis, chapter 7 and verse 25, and they were at the party, and they had wine, and everybody was just wonderful, and they just hugging and kissing, and they lived happily ever after. Now we would have an issue. But God says, no, 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 let me show you where wine's going to take you when you get drunk. Watch it, watch it. And he said, cursed. Be Cain and a servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. And he said, blessed be the Lord God of Shem and Cain and shall be his servant. In other words, he said, the one that got drunk, you're cursed. And the one that refused to do what the drunken, uh, who refused to partake of the drunken scene, you're blessed. He makes a distinction. If you are involved, I, sh I should not be comfortable. Let me play make it plain. I should not be comfortable going into a bar. Say my sibling, somebody has a party, and it's at a club. I'm going to go there for a minute. My sister supported my sister. Once I see them start partaking of the liquor, I'm going. Okay, check you all later. Because I now cannot become a witness to the drunken stupor or the impact, whatever impact it is, that wine, beer, whatever alcohol brings about. Because I want to remain blessed. And look, look, listen to it. Suppose somebody left their party, got in an accident and died. I would feel terrible because I was there and I watched a minute. So you're blessed when you don't partake of it. This is the first instant, instant when God shows the word wine. He immediately shows the impact of wine. And again, I'm going to say, you're going to say, but they got drunk with wine, Pastor. I'm telling you, God would not put out there a temptation that's okay for some and not okay for others. Sin is sin. All liars shall have their, not the little liars, the big liars, not the one that lied real well and didn't get caught. All liars are going to have their part in the lake of fire. And so we don't say, well, she can handle her liquor. She doesn't get drunk. She's okay. It's all wrong. So points to note in this example. Noah planted a vineyard. He got fruit from the vineyard. Then he, this is my phrase, he demonized the fruit. He demonized the fruit. 
He took it from its natural state. You go up into um, California. What's this winery called? Give me one of them. Hmm? Martha's Vineyard has, has, has wine, right? Napa Valley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm heard of that. You go up there. The de the demonizing fruit. They're taking what God made naturally and they're making it so it's for it to appeal. I'm seeing them. I should have got a wine glass. They look at it. What? All I see is a red liquid. They're looking at it. Then they swish it to see how it moves. What is this? Well, they've got a right to because it's a spirit. It's a spirit. It's going to do more than move in that wine glass. It's going to move in your body and your brain. Hope I'm frightening you all. Eve, it's a demonized fruit, I said. It's... Give the mic to Sister Danielle. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good evening. Um, I was just wondering, a lot of people bring up the mention of marijuana. What about marijuana in its natural state before it's smoked? If you were to just take it off the bush and do whatever with it, like eat it. Then or, I do that. I know, I'm just saying. Like, if... Because there are some natural, I forget the initials, I forget the substance, natural. Every plant's going to have the potential of good and evil. So in its natural form, it's fine? In its natural form, state, it's fine. you know, where it's pain, you, can, you, you know, people suffering with cancer can use it to take numb the pain. That's fine. I don't have an issue with that. But my students, when I taught, and some people I see today, they were numbing no type of cancer pain. They were numbing their brains. So the, the moment that you take the plant, the juice, the whatever, and you distort its natural chemical formula. Yeah. See, God makes every plant, every tree, with a certain chemical formula. What we do through distillation and fermentation and burning and whatever, we break the bonds and there are different effects. So we distort it. And in my word, we demonize it. It's a demon spirit. And you have families right now de totally feeling the impact of alcohol. Oh my, I lost a grandfather, what, 53 years old? 57 years old, liver, scler liver sclerosis. And while he was living, full of liquor. Come on, you used to drink there? But my daddy could hold his liquor. My dad said nobody would find him drunk, probably except his wife, but nobody would find him drunk. Nobody. But it still had an impact, because I know your story, right? You want to tell your story? It's up to you. Which one? See that? Which one? Come here. That's me, Mike. Come here and tell your story for the people. Come up. The one about the water. Oh boy. Didn't you get your most drawn? Oh, man, I stopped drinking your name. Wait. Yes, why you stopped? Go ahead, tell your story. Tell it loud. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was working for Mountain de Sierra, and I was smoke and drink. Smoke and drink. So, about, about uh, 8 o'clock in the morning, I went swimming. And I woke up, found myself on the rocks. I said, now, how did that happen? I said, oh, yeah, but well, that's the end of that. And I never drank or smoked again. Yeah. And that was 1972. 1972. I was how old? Seven years old. I was born 65. God's perfect number of seven. That's why he did it at that age. But the point is, he didn't know how he, how he got out of the water on the rocks. We didn't know big old jellyfish came and saved his life. I just heard that Mother Russell. I didn't know how, how and why, but thank God, didn't it? Some people go through an experience, and it shocks them. It's an unforgettable moment. But I'm going to tell you, he must have wasted some money unless he got all his liquor free. I probably could have had more Christmas presents. You have a little issue right here now. Nah. Just having a little issue. Just a little one. It impacts. 
And, and, and what happens is, it becomes generational. I saw it on both sides of the family. I've shared it with you before. I said, no way. So I had to now, with knowledge of what happens with it, decide not to go that way. Because it's, de I will say it again, it's demonized fruit. That's your new phrase for the year. Every time you see somebody, liquor, beer, alcohol, wine, family dinners, well, not at your house, it shouldn't be. That's right. Good. You got to say, you got to say, oh, demon spirit, demon spirit. I mean, I'm, I'm I remember some family gatherings. Everything starts quiet till the liquor gets in. Liquor gets in, there's a certain amount of freedom. The inhibitions are gone. You're hurting people's feelings. Don't even realize what you're saying to your own people that you love. Because the liquor got you. And it's a deep, did I say it's, it's demonized. Demonized. So look, Noah plants the vineyard, he's working the ground, picks up the fruit, he demonizes it, and guess what happens? Evil happens. That's all I'm saying. He created an atmosphere where evil could happen. I can go into the evil that happened, but not tonight. All right? Ham did take advantage of his father's nakedness and expose his father to others. When you're drunk, you tell on your friends, especially if somebody tries to stop you. Hey, you didn't stop me. Yeah. You're got some nerve. I tell somebody about you. <laughs> I'm serious. All of a sudden, you feel like the truth detector, full of the demon. I'm just telling you like it is. Some families have literally stopped being together because of what one said to another when they were drunk. You tell your, your relatives a, a secret. Demon, demonized fruit don't know no secret. They just know how to tell a secret. Tell the whole truth. Drunk people, drunk man tell no lies. Talk about me. Talk about me. Your husband now, are you? All of a sudden, and then if the children in the room, oh Lord. I, I'm just saying, all of this because, go back to Genesis, God said it's good. And the enemy says, yeah, all I need to do is expose them one time to the evil. After that, I'm got them. And this is what he continues today. So when we, I'm telling you right now, every time we go grocery shopping, Especially around holidays. We see them packing in the liquor. And notice it's all the liquor. You know, it's nice that Linda's is not open on Sunday. But I tell you what, Monday through Saturday, that whole liquor section's open. Hmm? <laughs> when you see them putting it in, you can't say nothing. You got to be nice. You speak, you say good afternoon. How you doing all that? But I tell you what, Pastor Maria seems giving me a look at that demonized fruit. Maybe if I even said it, they wouldn't even know what I mean. They wouldn't even know what I mean. Demonize. I'm trying to tell you. You can't control the demon. There are no boundaries. The only boundary is you. How much of it will you consume? Then I didn't mean to. You know how many murders happen when people are high? Murders through drunk driving. This young man we just lost. Precious years of 19. What? The demon. It's a demon. Let me finish this up. And so with this example, Ham's fruit or seed was now cursed. It's now in his genetic makeup. It will pass on to his seed. The son that did not partake of the evil he was, the result was that he was blessed. You're blessed. Save yourself money. You're blessed. Save yourself drama. You're blessed. Hmm? 
The law of first mention is an indicator of the principle of God's, of principle of the matter to God. That's why I had to go back to the beginning. Because I was going to start with, not that one, but go up to the New Testament. God said, no, 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 no. Plenty of distortion by the time you get to the New Testament. Catch it in the beginning, what happened? Note that God will never stop you from drinking alcoholic beverages. You must have enough God knowledge and wisdom to refuse it, refrain from it. How many of our family members drank themselves to death, drank themselves into poverty, drank themselves to hell? It's a curse. It brings about death. Your body is a temple, not a refinery for alcohol. Stay away from, this is my final sentence. That's, am I got that one up there? Final sentence. Stay away from all grains, fruit, and vegetables. <laughs> then they say, now let me continue the sentence. <laughs> Stay away from all grains, fruit, and vegetables that have been demonized to do that which is not good. When God created them, he said they're good. So you can't mess around with things that have now been made not good. You know how many people are down at the psychi uh, psychiatric place because they partook? So how many people had spiked this and spiked that? Hmm? Stay away from it. All right? Now, we need to go deeper into this topic at another time. We will. But my key thing was to show you what God wanted fruit, vegetables, and grains to be in the beginning and what they have become because we got all the knowledge. We partook of what he said not to partake of. Now, it just so happens that the same reasoning is going to apply to all sins. Isn't it? God makes it easy. So while I'm kicking up about alcohol, I'm still talking about adultery, fornication, bitterness, lying, stealing, all of that. When you find yourself in that, you, you have partaken of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and then chosen to do the evil part of it. And we must choose God again and again. Are, are you hearing me, church? That's why when you feel frustrated or what, choose God. Your love for God strengthens you to refuse anything that is unlike him. Have you learned something tonight? Huh? Stand firm on that, church. And, and I'm going to tell you, even as you, with more knowledge, look at people in general, our families, you're going to see God did not mean this. God did not mean for us to be consuming alcoholic spirits. Something that distorts. Watch what it distorts. The blood. Come on now. Come on. The courts to, de to determine how much they take of your blood. The enemy always can be after your blood to destroy your blood and destroy your lineage, your blood. Well, we plead the blood of Jesus against that. And we're going to call Christians, God's people, into right standing and that we will get the mind of Christ to understand, let's get back to Eden. Live on top of the world. Yeah, let's get back to Eden. Until I, until I see Jesus, I'm going to live as close to heaven as I can. And that means in order to keep my mind, I'm going to do that which is good. Amen? Amen. All right, now the cameras are not on you. How many of you are glad that you've been delivered from smoking and drinking? I'm clear as much smoking and drinking and alcohol and uh, all that stuff. All the trees, Lord of mercy. Thank you, Jesus. And this gives us hope for the many others. Because if God did it for you, if he did it for me, he'll do it for them. And I'm going to reiterate this. If, if, you out, if you love God to the best of your ability, no adversarial tree, grain, or vegetable will come nigh your dwelling. <laughs> I love God too much to be tempted and to fall into that temptation. 
and he will make a way of escape. Put your hands together for the world.